So this over here is the Geekcom A8 and this is supposed to be the fastest Ryzen AI mini PC in the world right now because what we're rocking over here is a Ryzen 9 8945HS CPU. Well that looks to be really really fast. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So this one here seems to be quite a flagship model as well. 8945HS, 32 gigs of RAM, and a two terabyte SSD. Now, I think this one goes for $900. Check the links in the description below, if I'm not mistaken. We did check out the A7 a little while ago, and that one was tiny. And I'm curious to see if this is the same size. Have they used the same chassis? Oh my word, they have. Okay, this is so small. Oh my word, look at that. So let's take a look at the sides straight away. So in the front, we've got two USB type A and a mic and headphone combo jack and a power button. On the left side, we've got an SD card reader. Yes, Geekom keeps going with these, that's good. Then on the back, we've got one USB 4, USB-C port, which is 40 gigabits in speed. There's another one here for 10 gigabits in speed, but both of these support display outputs apparently. And then two HDMI ports, one 2.5 gig LAN, and two more USB type A ports, one of them 2.0, one of them 3.0, 10 gigabits in speed. So that is super fast connectivity on all of them. And we've got the power jack that goes in there. It says here, green mini PC global leader Geekcom. I don't know what the green mini PC is, but hopefully they do some good stuff. So a power adapter, 120 watts, HDMI cable, and a visa mount, and some screws for the visa mount. Now let's turn this PC on, set it up, and then actually check how good it is. So finally, I've got the PC on and it's taken a while to set up actually. Doing the Windows update, it took me like a couple hours. So just so you know when you get yours, that's what you might get. Firstly, looking at the task manager, we can see the CPU in here, which is the Ryzen 8945HS. And if you don't know about the AMD's naming kind of scam already, then the first letter or the number in there in the fall numbers is not necessarily about the new generation but this is really the year it's been launched so eight means that it's launched in 2024 nine means it's 2025 and seven means it's 2023 in essence the ryzen 7945hs is exactly the same cpu but just launched last year but you might think you're gonna get a new cpu but nothing's changed it's exactly the same what is different about the 8945HS compared to the 7945HS is that this one has an AI. But usually if you're you know, familiar with these AI PCs, you usually see this on the desktop in there. But AMD hasn't built support yet for task manager, so we can't actually see the AI boost anywhere. But there is an AI NPU in there. So if you're looking at side by side, the Ryzen 9 8945HS and the 7940HS, then these should be all exactly the same specs. As you can see, cores exactly the same. It's a Zen based Zen 4 architecture. And where does the 4 actually come in? Like, how do you know which is the latest architecture of CPUs? Remember the third here, on both, that shows the Zen architecture. So you can uh, essentially have 8935HS CPU, which you think, whoa, it's a new one as well, but it's actually based on the Zen 3 architecture and is using a lot older, you know, basically CPU. So max boost clocks 5.2, base clocks 4.0, configurable TDP 35 to 45, TSMC's four nanometer FinFET processor. Connectivity should be the same. Graphics is exactly the same. The only difference is the AI performance. You've got Ryzen AI available here with up to 16 TOPS. Uh, total processor performance is there, whereas as you can see, the 70 
940 HS is a little lower. Then we've got 32 gigs of RAM, which is running at 5600 megahertz. Form factor looks like it's a sodium and we've got two slots of these, so that's nice. We've got an SSD, Acer SSD N7000 2 terabyte SSD in there and we'll check the speeds of it right now as well. We'll let the SSD speed test go there and we'll see what it's going to be like in there, but it is a 2 terabyte drive, which is supposed to be the maximum what this offers here. I don't know why this should be limited to 2 terabyte, even though you could put 4 and 8 in there as well if you wanted to change that, but the specs say two terabytes. We've got 2.5 gig ethernet and for GPU, integrated GPU, which is a 78M graphics from Radeon, you know, from the AMD as well. But the thing is, this is really meant for gaming and not really for creators. The AMD GPU doesn't quite perform as well with creative applications, but it will be interesting to check out how good is it in terms of, you know, Premiere Pro timeline performance, for example, because AMD does support quite a bit of these. So as you can see, some of the specs here, max encoding and decoding, you can see all of these different bits in there. It can do even 8K, 8-bit and 10-bit AV1 encoding, which is nice, and decoding, obviously the same. Lots of codecs, but I'd like to see how this performs in Premiere Pro. So I might do that in a live stream. Stick around if you want to see that. Or maybe it's already out there. Go check out the live stream tab on the channel. Now, as we can see, our CPU has gone to 5.2 on one of these cores here. Two of these cores. Uh, some of them have gone to 5.1 but more, all of them have gone to 5 gigahertz. This one, it seems to be a little bit slower, one 4.9, but I think we're gonna still get there. So far, we pulled 30 watts max and we're 81C in there, and we haven't done much on the CPU. It's 26.9 degrees in this room right now, so it's rather hot. Look at the speeds of the SSD, 6.9 gigabytes and six gigabytes right. That's a very, very good Gen 4 reads and writes. Let's open Cinebench R23 and let's take a look how good is the multi-core and what can we get out of here? How much wattage are we actually pulling? On AMD CPU, the TDP, so what are we pulling here? 50 watts, very impressive. So we are boosting a, probably even more than what AMD said there. To remember 35, 45 watts was the TDP configurable limit there. We are 92 degrees. Are we thermally throttling? Nope, not yet. As you can see, the die is 92C. Some of the cores are 90. Yep, core two is 90 degrees, but it's still boosting quite high wattage. 38 now. Interestingly, it's not thermal throttling it. 15,533 points. Now, that is the same as the 10900K what I'm recording this on. I think feel like I've made this comparison a few times, but if you're looking at the M1 Mac Mini, then that is doing 7,760. If we're looking at the M2 Mac Mini, that's 8,700. So we're two times better than the M2 Mac Mini. And the M1 Max is getting 12,380 points. This little guy is absolutely insane. Maybe there's position boost overdrive or something like that. Let's take a look at the BIOS. Okay. Here we are. Fan mode is in performance mode. Okay, not much to change here. Security, nothing here. Boot, uh, nothing here either. It's pretty basic, really. Nothing in the BIOS. Absolutely nothing to change here. Now, I'm not gonna put on the hardware monitor and I'm gonna do the multi-core test again to see if we can get a higher score just because we don't have anything running in the background. A little bit higher, 15,712. Let's do a single call as well. It's gonna take a little longer. Um, okay, I don't know what happened, but for some reason the single call test just stopped here and it's not doing it anymore. Oh, are we done? Is that what, what the situation is? Yeah, it is done, but to know the score. Ah, there we go, for some reason it's there now. 1,788. Whoa, that is quite good. I mean, looking at the M1 Max 1521, much better. M2 1622, much better. I mean, this is uh, very close to like the desktop 7000 Ryzen single core performance, which is quite insane, really. It's faster than the 11th gen Intel and about the same as 12th gen of Intel kind of single core speed. So it's very interesting. Now, because this is a PC, 
and not a mag, we can actually tear it down and open it up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So underneath these legs are secret screws, very tiny screws, four of them. And then the back panel comes off, but careful with it because we've got the Wi-Fi antenna there underneath. And then on top here, what we see is a little pad, which just basically makes sure that the bottom doesn't squish down as much. Let's take this metal bracket off as well. Okay. I mean, the good thing is they're using this metal bracket as the heatsink for the M.2 SSD. As you can see, they've put a little thermal pad on. Doesn't cover quite everything, but there it is. And interestingly, there is not a secondary M.2 slot in here. Why this is weird is because you can see they haven't soldered it in here. There's a slot in here for this, as well as the screw hole that it should go into. There's no other screw that goes in here. That's where the M.2 should be sitting and they could put 2240 in there. So as you can see, the 2230 would go in there easily, but then the 42 or 2242 M.2 would go there as well. So for some reason, they just haven't literally soldered that one in there, which is a bit of a shame. And you can see that in maybe some of the other motherboards or they had the design, but somehow decided not to do it. So here's our SSD, Acer N7000. So it's quite a high-end Gen 4 SSD. Underneath the SSD, we've got a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, which you can change as well and upgrade later on. The SD card slots in there, what Keegum always does. And we have our RAM. And nice that we can change this, and I believe you can upgrade it to 64 gigabytes, perhaps even 96. That's pretty cool. In order to get underneath, you just have to take these studs or standoffs off in the corners and then the motherboard and everything comes off but because the cooling was actually pretty good i don't see why you need to go on the other side because there's literally nothing to see or do there and that's it but i wish they had another secondary m.2 ssd slot because that would make this pc so much better especially because we're taking a dig on apple here we're smaller than the mac mini maybe you've seen the video have a look at the 7 series the a7 review where you can see that and we can upgrade things like the ram and the ssd i just wish we had the option to upgrade a little more the good thing is even if you take these rubber legs off because they have like these little rubber rubber clips that kind of hold it down there even if the kind of glue gets old it still sticks down and you're not going to lose uh, these legs so what's the uh, genesis then with this pc well, firstly, to have something so small and so powerful is insane. You can mount it in the back of your monitor. The possibilities of what you can do with it are endless. There is plenty of I.O. in the back there for connectivity, monitors, attach many multiple monitors, um, connectivity in the front, even SD card reader for the creators and design. Honestly, it's really, really nice. This is one of the best designs of mini PCs that um, I've come across. You can see sometimes very plasticky and very cheap chassis. This feels like a very premium one. And I think Geekom really starts to compete with Minis Forum in some of their things, but I prefer Geekom's design just because it is smaller and more minimal a design than some of the Minis Forum competition. So if you want to check this one out, there is a lower version of this as well. I'm going to leave the links in the description below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.